In May of 2023, we headed to the southern interior of British Columbia for the Wild Horse Traverse, a 50-kilometer trail race by Pace Trail Runs. Audrey and I would be using this as an early season tune-up, and the main challenge would be the hot weather. But we knew the course would be beautiful, and it would be a great chance to reconnect with some friends. You guys ready for this? Yeah. Good. Ready? I'm never ready. <laughs> <laughs> the race was taking place near Penticton, about a four-hour drive from our home in Vancouver, which is where we planned on spending the night before taking the shuttle back to the start further along the eastern shore of Okanagan Lake. From there, the course would traverse above the lake, reaching the water once at the first of only three aid stations, before eventually finishing in the small lakeside community of Naramata. The Okanagan is known for its vineyards, and it's a hub for wine enthusiasts. The region's warm and dry climate is also ideal for outdoor activities, making it a popular year-round destination. What happened? So the towel rack fell on the ground and cut like my poor toe it hurts so bad i think this piece <laughs> fell right on my toe oh no <laughs> of course the day before the race <laughs> i was really impressed with this motel <laughs> up until now <laughs> So we've arrived at our little motel here in Penticton. I've already got my race kit uh, laid out and ready to go. Um, it's gonna be really hot tomorrow. We are required to have capacity for a liter and a half of water. I'm actually gonna bring my water filter as well because fortunately the creeks will be running so I should be able to pull water en route if need be. I'm gonna start the morning with a shot of ketone IQ and probably a knack waffle. And then I've got a couple more waffles and some chews and things along with uh, two bottles worth of super high carb sports drink from scratch. At the 32 kilometer mark, we'll have a drop bag. I'll have a couple more bottles pre-filled with more scratch and another shot of ketone IQ. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. It's just a 50K one drop bag, uh, so it should be pretty straightforward, but it is gonna be hot. So my kit is very similar to Jeff. Uh, basically, I'm leaving with three bottles, so capacity for 1.5 liter. I've got my miniature gear, so a light jacket and a space blanket. Uh, I'm also going for a light colored outfit. I think that will be key. Uh, I'm gonna be carrying a buff so I can fill it up with ice cubes. Hopefully they have ice at the aid stations to cool ourselves down. Um, otherwise, just leaving uh, some body glide, uh, some spare sunscreen, and a little bit of extra calories uh, at the aid station at the 32K mark. And how's your toe? Yeah, I think my toe will be okay. I can move it. It's mostly just bleeding now. <laughs> <laughs> After dropping off our car at the finish line, we caught an early morning shuttle back to the race start. Hi, Renee. How are you doing? How are you? It's so good to see you. Hey, thank you so much. Gear checked. Ready to go. We passed. Okay, I'm just going to leave my drop bag. We did our package pickup and mandatory gear check, and then lined up for the pre-race briefing. Right, please take a moment to thank the volunteers. Some of them will be out there longer than you today. Um, if you, yeah, we have an amazing volunteer team. We had uh, Nicole camped out overnight with her dog. You guys saw her on social media last night at Aid One. Now we get into the nitty gritty. This race is not called the manicured horse. Okay, it's not called the buff horse. It is called the wild horse for a reason. Hopefully your expectations are in check. You're not expecting too much groomed, clear, or buff trails out there. If you want those, you should do Nimble Bear next year. Um, there is some overgrowth and bushy areas. There's some very rugged terrain waiting for you guys. So I want you guys to mentally prepare for that. Remember that I said that. Be strong out there. Take uh, care of each other. Stay tough. Smile if you're in a low point. You can always fake it till you make it. And I look forward to meeting every single one of you today in Naramata for a high five, a hug, a cold beer, and a celebration with all your wild friends today. Thank you so much for choosing Pace. You guys can come on up to the We'll crank up some tunes, get you guys pumped up, and get you on your way. Ready to go? Yes. <laughs>
Let's do it. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You? Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. 45 seconds till start. Have a good run, Janelle. Here we go in 10, 9, 8. We're off on the Wild Horse Traverse 50K from uh, Kelowna back to Naramata. Running with my buddy Etienne here. Beautiful view. Beautiful morning so far for sure, but it's gonna get hot. We're expecting what, close to 30 degrees Celsius? 30 I think? degrees today, yeah. Yeah. So the name of the game is to get done before it gets too hot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being out here, guys. Appreciate it. Just a few kilometers in and starts with a couple of punchy climbs. Pretty steep. already quite hot but so far of course it's super nice my little pinky toe is a little sore today after I almost chopped it off by accident last night <laughs> uh, I was hoping it wouldn't bother me too much but it's a little painful I can feel it when I run Liam, how's your day going so far? It's going well. Almost fell over back there. Yeah, I heard that. What but do you think? I caught it. What do you think of the course so far? It's nice. It's really cruisy. Yeah. Good pace, yeah. beautiful views, and a lot of shade. So far, so good, right? A little bit of a breeze, even. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope that uh, it stays cool. Don't want to count our chickens too soon here, but so far, it's quite pleasant. Okay, in. an hour, an hour 10. It's a pretty fast first 10K, but lots of runnable stuff in there, including like first two, two and a half K on the road, so. All right, so we're at just over 15K here, about an hour and a half into the race. Got a good, uh, good pace, big group of guys. Lots of good conversation, passing the miles. And there's a nice breeze too. So we've got a really good pace going. Hopefully we can keep this up. Woo! This little section is so nice. Super runnable.
15 kilometers down. An hour 45. This little section is so pretty and uh, like fully shaded under the canopy. It's really nice and cool in here, which is very pleasant. I soon caught up to my friend and Solomon teammate, Janelle Hazlitt, who would go on to finish third place female. Hey guys, thanks for being out here. Hey Janelle, how you doing? You looking good. You look tanned, you look heat trained. Nice job. Nice work. So we're on the up and back down to the water, out to the aid station here, uh, which should be at around 21 kilometers. Uh, so we're passing the lead runners now, which is always fun. Nice job. Nice work, guys. Forty-three. Thanks. Thanks you. Hey, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Forty-three. Get my good side. <laughs> Thanks for being out here, guys. Appreciate it. Take care, Probably it for the shade, hey? Yeah, it felt good on the canyon. It sure did. All right, we're through aid, aid station one. We've got a climb ahead of us, and that's probably it for the shade. Oh, we're climbing back up from the water here. It's funny, it didn't feel like we dropped down this much. Nice job. It but it never does, does it? <laughs> All right, so I've just passed the 20K mark and I'm starting the descent to the first aid station. So apparently it's all the way down this hill and it's an out and back. So we get to climb right back up after. <laughs> but pretty fun to see some of the leaders coming back up already. And I drank all my fluids so far. So it's good timing for this aid station. I'm gonna fill up. Nice work. Oh, yeah. Good job. Hey, nice work, Etienne. Your little man is right behind me. Oh, yeah, look at him. <laughs> Hi. Nice job. Good job. Nice work, guys. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Nice work, Janelle. Killing it. Good job. There goes Audrey on her way down to the aid station. Good. Looking good. Hey, nice job. Nice job, guys. So we've been running with a bit of a group here since uh, the aid station. It's nice, um, except the trails are very dusty, um, so I'm eating dust here. And now we're a lot more exposed in the sun, and uh, the heat is starting to be real. <laughs> so I'm drinking a lot. Make sure I don't get behind on my hydration and nutrition. creek back there. I was able to dunk my hat, fill up my bottle, because it's starting to get really warm. So now is the time where heat management becomes really important. 
got a really big climb ahead of us, the biggest one of the day, followed by a uh, little descent and then one more climb and then it's all downhill. Whew. It is hot now, proper hot. <laughs> I'm approaching the 30k mark. I'm feeling good though, I think I'm uh, managing the heat pretty well. Taking my time on this section because I knew this was going to be the crux. Got most of the climbing and um, little technical bits. But uh, yeah, the top here just opened right up and it's beautiful. Okay, we're at 31 kilometers. We're nearing the top of this climb. I think the aid station is just up here and it's getting pretty warm. I'm taking every chance I can to dunk my hat in the creeks. Uh, but yeah, it's hot, it's exposed. I'm looking forward to that downhill. Guys. Hello. Ooh, watermelon. Hello. Hi, David. You want to? Uh, okay. I put ice under my hat, and I put a bunch of ice down my back, and it's all downhill to the finish. to hit the second hit station here. Hi. Thank you. And yeah, it's, I'm repeating myself, but it's really hot out here. This section has definitely been quite difficult. Um, just over two hours now to cover 14 kilometers about what I expected but uh, yeah still moving well managing the heat I've been running with Sarah here for a while from Squamish she's crushing her first 50k <laughs> Thanks guys. I'll just uh, get a bit of water please. Yeah. Do you need any help? No, that's fine. Thanks guys. Thank you. Okay, that was the final aid station. There's only about 6k left, but I was running pretty low on water, so I got one flask filled up. And I had some pickles. So that should last me to the finish. Hey there. Cool. That was a fast few kilometers there. 
all downhill since that last in station. Eight K left. And my legs are hurting. Cool. Thank you. It was good. It was hot. It was yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Just over 2k to go. Whew, so close. Hey, you too. Nice work. Hi. No problem. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> A couple seconds will not make or break my race. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Thank you so much. So this race definitely was a bit unique, even of a lot of um, ultras, a lot of 50Ks, there was very uh, minimal aid stations out there. And we knew, we knew that farewell. They also did a really excellent job of ensuring that racers were safe by setting in a mandatory 1.5 liters, but that wasn't even enough for me. I thought it would be, to be honest. At any crossing, creek crossing, I dunked my hat and made sure that it's wet. Um, I didn't use any ice, um, but yeah as much as I could embrace all the wet parts of that race. One strategy I did, which was really helpful, was at my drop bag at 35K, I had three baggies of ice. Um, so I put ice down my shirt, I put ice in my vest. I made sure that my vest and all of the gear that I was picking up was in a cooler with ice. So it was cold itself. And then every opportunity that I could get, any creek I crossed, I doused myself with water as much as I could. And I know a lot of runners did that, but that's a big piece is trying to stay cool as often as you can and just keep drinking as much as your body needs to and keep moving. I thought that a liter and a half of fluids from 21 kilometers to 35 would be enough and I ran out with eight kilometers left to get to the 35k station which man, meant that I ran out really quickly and I just took the risk of like finding the nicest running stream that I could and drinking and fingers crossed I don't feel ill tonight.